In our book, Hidden Prophecies in the Psalms, we noted that the Psalms happen to be the 19th book of the Bible. And as such, book 19, chapter 48, or Psalm 48, tells the story of 1948. One of the difficulties we have in considering this possibility is that in the Jewish Bible, the Psalms happen to be the 14th book of the Tanakh, or the, uh, what we would call the Old Testament. And I have a problem with that, or I did have for uh, a number of years. Why does it remain the 14th book in the Jewish Bible and the 19th book in the Christian Bible if as the 19th book we can see the 1900s delineated psalm by psalm by psalm? Well, I want you to know that the fact that it is the 14th book of the Old Testament Jewish Bible is very important. And Gary Stearman is here to discuss why this amazing set or collection of songs happens to be the 14th book. Well, you know, the 14th book, J.R., of the Psalms has a message about the house of David. The, the number 14 and the Hebrew letter associated with it is going to tell us an amazing historical truth. We've already known it in many ways, but now we have God's stamp on it, so to speak, in the Hebrew alphabet. This is astounding. And what we have here is a linkage between two kinds of economies, if you will. The economy that was initiated by Moses the Deliverer on the one hand, and the economy that was initiated by Jesus the Messiah on the other. Mm -hmm. And we have always known that, that these two men place their stamp on history, and that they are linked by metaphor, and that they are linked as prophets and as deliverers. But we found another interesting yes. linkage, too. You know, one of the fascinating uh, things about this is that the two Hebrew letters that are linked to the study of the Psalms would be the 14th letter and the 19th letter. And here we have, in the Jewish Bible, the Psalms is the 14th book corresponding to that 14th letter, Nun. And in our Christian Bible, it is the 19th book corresponding to the 19th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Kuf. Mm -hmm. Now, we have two uh, alphabetic Psalms. We do. Psalm 25 eliminates the 19th letter, Kuf. Psalm 145 is an alphabetic psalm, but eliminates the 14th letter, Nun. We have in those two psalms, which are both alphabetic, the 14th letter and the 19th letter are eliminated for a reason, and I think that is the underlying message of this incredible numbering of the psalms. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, uh, we speak from time to time about the metaphors uh, uh, that are involved with the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, we've included these in our book, Mystery of the Menorah and the Hebrew Alphabet, in which each of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet has a uh, metaphorical meaning that goes all the way back to David and before. When David wrote Psalm 190, or 145, he left out one of the verses in an acrostic psalm that should have been 22 verses long. He left out the letter Nun, which is uh, the symbol of downfall and rising again. Because at the time he wrote Psalm 145, his subject was the final reconciliation between God and man in the kingdom, and there would be no more downfall at that time. The downfall was far past, and so that letter is removed. And this gives us a lot of clues, because uh, the letter Nun, Psalm 145, is the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 14 has the metaphor of downfall and rising again. And J.R., this is the very thing yeah. that typifies the history of Israel. Yeah, with emphasis on the downfall. Yeah. So what we have here, and, and by the way, the Kof now represents a rising again. So it does. I, I, explain uh, that in Psalm 25 and why it is not there. Psalm 25 eliminates uh, the Kof. And Psalm 20, and we'll get into this more a little bit later. Kof is the letter that, that typifies uh, holiness and growth cycles, or uh, if you will, circular 
uh, a kind of a spiraling upward would be a good way to picture it. And it typifies the work of Jesus. In other words, uh, when you're involved with Jesus and when you're involved with salvation, there's no downfall and rising again. Yes. It's all a series of holiness and growth cycles, which happens to be uh, the very metaphor of the letter Kof and the metaphor of Psalms, which is the 19th book, Kof being the 19th letter. Mm -hmm. And to, to us as, uh, as Christians safe in Christ, uh, we approach psalms as, as, as holiness and as growth cycles. Israel, on the other hand, approaches psalms as the 14th book of its writings, which the, the theme of which is downfall and rising again. And so we have two different ways of looking at the psalms. So here we have two Bibles. We have the um, Jewish Bible, which speaks of the fall of Israel under the law. And we have the Christian Bible, which speaks of the rising again under grace. The 14th book, the noon book, downfall, and the 19th book, the Kof, the holiness and growth cycles, the fall and the rising again. And the interesting thing about it is Psalms 90 through 100 represent the song of Moses, which also speak of the same thing which we've dealt with in our book, uh, Hidden Prophecies in the Song of Moses. Now, when Simeon saw the baby Jesus, just about uh, 30, 40 days old, he said, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of Israel. So what we have here, folks, is the, the, the fall represented by the 14th book, it actually being mm -hmm. here in his book, as no, book number 14, we have the Psalms representing the noon of Israel, the downfall of Israel, the fall under the law. But after the fall of Israel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, his ascension back into heaven, AD 70, when the Jews were scattered to the slave markets of the world and the Romans burned the temple, what we have is the Psalms book then became the 19th book of the Old Testament, which speaks of that future rising again, that holiness and growth cycles when the Jewish people who've gone down into the pit are pulled out of the pit and placed at the head of the nations. That's what we have as the Psalms being mm -hmm. the 14th book in the Jewish Bible and the 19th book in the Christian Bible. But yeah. there's more. Oh, there's much there's more. And by more. the way, before we go to that something more, Jesus mm -hmm. actually mentioned the Psalms as being prophetic. Yes. And you might pass that along before yes. we go to this next thing. In Luke 24, 44, Jesus appeared to the disciples the night of resurrection. He, as if he had walked through the wall because he had the doors locked, the windows were barred. Mm -hmm. He said, that the prophecies must be fulfilled which are in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Mm. So he said there are prophecies in the Psalms. Yeah. And these prophecies not only relate to Israel in the fall and rise again of Israel, but also to the Lord himself, to the Messiah, mm -hmm. the fall and rising again of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now let's go back in history. Uh, of course, Exodus, uh, the book that begins with the birth of Moses. Mm -hmm. And Moses was the deliverer. He was also, and, and to this day, the Jews call him Israel's greatest prophet. And uh, by the way, he is certainly great. Uh, we would say that there's another prophet even greater. And Moses said in Deuteronomy 19:15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Mm -hmm. And then again in... That would be uh, chapter 18? Uh, Ch Deuteronomy 18. Did I misquote that? 19. I'm sorry about that. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Sometimes mm -hmm. my brain and my mouth are going in two different directions. And again in Deuteronomy 18, 18, Moses says, I will raise them up a prophet. Now, Moses is is speaking the words of the Lord, who says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. And we could go on a lot farther and spend more time reading scripture, but, yeah. but J.R., what we have here to my mind is a link between 
Moses and Jesus, a historical yes. link, and it begs further examination. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you got to understand that if we can look at book 19 and chapter 48, or Psalm 48, and say that is a prophecy of 1948, and if we can look at Psalm 91 and say that's a prophecy of 1991, Mm -hmm. If we can look at Psalm 93 and say that's a prophecy of 1993, and uh, may I say, as we have in our book, Hidden Prophecies in the Psalms, mm -hmm. we have started with Psalm 1, 1901, mm -hmm. uh, right on through Psalm 2, 1902, Psalm 3, 1903, right on through, I'm talking about the first 95 Psalms, yeah. des describing the first 95 years of this century, what are we going to do with Psalms as the 14th book? Can we go to Psalm 1 and see the year 1401? Hmm. Let me interrupt here just a moment and say, uh -huh. now there are, there are going to be, I know some of you out there, this is a brand new thing for you. You're saying to yourself, wait a minute, you mean the Psalms tell times that you can discern something about the latter days by looking at the arrangement of the Psalms? Well, J.R.'s book, Hidden Prophecies in the Psalms, lays it out. Yes. And at first it's very difficult to believe, but the more you look, the more believable it gets. Psalms, the 19th book, Psalm 1, 1901, Psalm 2, 1902 in the Gentile calendar, Psalm 3, 1903, and then Psalm 19. Uh, the book 19, Psalms, 1948 uh, would be 1948 and counting on and on and on. And it's that simple and you, once you see it unlocked, you'll be amazed. Yes. Now, what J.R. is saying is this. What about the Masoretic text used by the Jews today? And J.R. has got a copy right here beside him this morning. What about the Masoretic text that has Psalms as the 14th book? Is, does the same principle hold true that, that this represents a 14th century and Psalm 1 would rep represent a year in that 14th century? Psalm 2 would represent another year? And if so, J.R., and here's the key question, 1,400 years after what? Yes, Gary, it works. It absolutely works. Now, in order to, f to find us a criteria where to go for mm -hmm. To, we went to Psalm 22, which opens with, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We know that's Calvary. Mm -hmm. And that occurred in the year around 33 A.D. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lock right here. If uh, book number 14 and uh, chapter 22 tells the story of A.D. 33, it's 1,422 years from what? And we have gone back and checked it out. Gary, it goes right straight to the birth of Moses. It does. From the birth of Moses through 1,400 years later, we come to the bar mitzvah of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, it's 1,388 years from the birth of Moses to the birth of Jesus. We have to do a little bit of calculation here, so stay with us. Gary, explain why it is 1,388 years. Well, uh, Probably the most uh, reliable date for the birth of Moses is 1571 B.C. Mm -hmm. And that's been chronicled by several people. Uh, uh, E.W. Bullinger, I suppose, being the foremost, but others have arrived at roughly that number. And J.R., if you calculate from the birth of Moses in the way that the Jews do it, you have to eliminate certain years because they count time when they are in possession of the land. And so they exclude certain years. For example, in the book of Judges, a certain number of years are discounted because Israel was defeated and not truly in possession of the land. And and in that, captivity. In captivity. And that totals 93 years out of the book of Judges. Uh, in the Babylonian captivity, we have uh, 70 years in which Israel was in captivity, out of the land, not in control of the land. Also, <clears throat> earlier, uh, in, in the time of the wars of Joshua, to gain the land, during which time they weren't exclusively in control of the land, uh, would uh, come to 20 years. So you total 93 and 70 and 20, and you come up with 183 years uh, mm -hmm. of 
excluded years, let's call them, when Israel was not in control of the land. And uh, you subtract that number, 183, from 1571 B.C., the birth of Moses, you come up with 1,388 years between the birth of Moses and the birth of Jesus. And it works very well. Yes. Now, the difference here is the difference between cardinal years and ordinal years. According to E.W. Bullinger in his book, Number in Scripture, there is a difference. 1571 B.C. would be cardinal years. The 1,388 years from the birth of Moses to the birth of Christ would be ordinal years. Mm -hmm. And so when we come to Psalm 1, blessed is the man we find Jesus bar mitzvah. When the young man was no longer a child, he becomes an adult. Blessed is the man, not blessed is the child. Yes. And it goes on to talk about his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's the bar mitzvah of the Lord Jesus Christ, which brings us 22 years later to Calvary Indeed. in Psalm 22. And by the way, the bar mitzvah of the Lord Jesus Christ was exactly 1,400 years after the birth of Moses, counting the years when Israel was in possession of the land. <clears throat> and this 1,400 and first year, we might say, would be Psalms as the 14th book of the Masoretic Text, chapter 1, Psalm 1, 1401, Jesus appears in the temple, and we have the words, blessed is the man. Yes. And this was a, a more or less a blessing on his entire life. Now that would make his uh, entering his ministry around Psalm 19, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? And the marriage in Cana of Galilee. His first miracle, a uh, marriage of Cana in Galilee. And by the way, Psalm 19. What a psalm by <laughs> Psalm 19, which happens to be the letter Kof, the letter of holiness and growth cycles. Uh, it, we read in verse 5, which, uh, uh, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven, his circuit from the ends of it, unto the ends of it, and there's nothing that is hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect. The going forth here of the, the Lord. Entering of his ministry. The entering of his ministry. <laughs> wow. The bridegroom comes. Yes, and for the next three psalms, we have this incredible references mm -hmm. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the name yeah. of Yeshua, Jesus, oh, is yeah. found in these psalms. Not, psalm 21, uh, verse 1, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, Yeshua, how greatly shall he rejoice. Mm. And then uh, the third year of the public ministry here would be Psalm 22. Uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which is the crucifixion yes. immediately preceded by these words uh, in verse 11 of Psalm 21. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they're not able to perform. Mm. Uh, this is the arrest of Christ. And as you look metaphorically then at Psalms, from the bar mitzvah of Jesus, mm -hmm. the, his appearance at the temple, Psalm 1, and go forth. J.R., you have a calendrical layout that takes you from the appearance of Christ to the final defeat of Israel mm -hmm. in the days of Simon bar Kokhba in 135 yeah. Yeah. A.D. Let's talk about A.D. 70 for a minute. That would be uh, Psalm 62. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gary, this uh, to me, in Psalms 61 and 62, are, and uh, what, 60, 61, mm -hmm. 62, this is very indicative of the Romans oh, yeah. besieging Jerusalem. When Vespasian and, and Titus came to lay siege to Israel, you know, a siege is where you surround a city. Mm -hmm. Well, the first year of the siege, Psalm 59, uh, it speaks of the enemies surrounding uh, Jerusalem. And a plea for, to God, it says, Defend me from them that rise up against me. Verse 6 of Psalm 59, They return at evening, they make a noise like a dog, they can go round about the city. Verse 14, round at evening. Round about the city. Around That's about incredible. The city. <laughs> it is. At evening, let them return, let them make a noise like a dog and go around about the city. We have here uh, three chapters yeah. corresponding to the final siege of Jerusalem, which are siege language. Uh, Psalm 60, God, thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us. Psalm 61, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. Uh, and we have uh, 
language of destruction, uh-huh. of embattlement, and finally of uh, uh, losing the battle. Yeah. In Psalm 61, 62. In Psalm uh, 62 there is a reference to the city as well. There is indeed. Uh, uh, verse 3 says, How long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall you be, and as a tottering fence. There it is. This is the year of the destruction of the temple. Wow. Now, following the Psalms, we need to go through to 132, 33, 34, the Bar Kokhba revolt and the total destruction of Jerusalem. And, and these Psalms literally give the heartbeat of what happened in those years under Bar Kokhba. They do indeed, and I'm turning to <clears throat> uh, Psalms 140 through 143 would correspond to roughly to this. Uh, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Uh, sets the theme of these psalms. And Psalm 144 uh, speaks of going to battle. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight. But, J.R., as you go through Psalm 144, the language becomes more and more language of defeat and of mm-hmm. desperation. And finally, it kind of ends with a whisper there. And this is exactly what happened in the year 135, which would be the year corresponding to this psalm using this dating system, the defeat of the armies of Bar Kokhba. This is an incredible discovery we've made here to understand that the psalms happens to be the 14th book of the Jewish Bible dating from the birth of Moses, the ordinal years through to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and his, his bar mitzvah in Psalm 1, his crucifixion in Psalm 22, the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 in Psalm 62, and the Bar Kokhba revolt in Psalms 42, Psalm uh, 142, 143, 144. And so you see, it is chronological in two ways. The 14th book, uh, because Israel fell under the law, but then the Christian Bible came along and God had it placed as the 19th book, dating from the birth of Christ to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, 1900 years. And so we have in book 19 and chapter 48, the birth of Israel in 1948, and all of the other ramifications of it. It's an incredible set of psalms.